Okay, now we're going to take a look at uh, what information you can get out of graphs. So graphs of position versus time, velocity versus time, acceleration versus time. That's what we call motion graphs. So first, let's consider the following sentence. The instantaneous acceleration is the blank at a particular instant on a velocity versus time graph. What is the best single word to put in that blank to make that sentence true? And it turns out to be the slope. So if you've got a velocity versus time graph, you go to a particular point in time, find the slope of the graph at that point. That is the value of the acceleration. Now if you have an acceleration versus time graph, you can get some information about the velocity. And in fact, what you get is information about the change in velocity. It turns out that the change in velocity is the blank for a particular time interval on an acceleration versus time graph. And here we're doing area under the curve. So on your acceleration versus time graph, you pick a time interval, find the area under the curve. That's the change in velocity. And those statements were generally true, but we're going to now look at a particular example of free fall. This is constant acceleration. And we're going to just imagine, approximate, in fact, that the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second every second directed down. Really, it's 9.8 on the Earth, but 10 is close enough. We're going to drop our object from a height of 20 meters above the ground. And when we let it go, it falls down. In fact, it accelerates down toward the ground. And why is that? And that's because the Earth is attracting it via the force of gravity. So there's an interaction between our object and the Earth, and it's an attractive interaction. And so the object heads toward the center of the Earth. And that force is approximately constant if we keep ourselves relatively small distance, uh, or basically close to the surface of the Earth. Okay, so you can see on the motion diagram that the dots are getting further and further apart as time goes by. That's consistent with the constant acceleration. The speed is increasing. And it's increasing, in fact, at a constant rate, and that's the acceleration being constant. Okay, so we're going to now draw a graph of acceleration as a function of time for this object. Okay, so think about what that looks like. Okay, so here's our graph, acceleration versus time. And what you can see is that, hey, it's constant. So that's consistent with what we said before. And in fact, it's got a value of minus 10 meters per second per second. So the negative sign indicates the direction. In this case, we've defined up to be positive, down is negative. Okay, so there's our graph acceleration versus time. Yeah, the acceleration is constant. So using this acceleration, we can find the ball's change in velocity. And one thing to remember is, if you're interested, the images on the motion diagram are every 0.2 seconds. Okay, well that's fine. But, in fact, that's irrelevant when we're talking about the graph acceleration versus time. Well, that's okay. So how do we get this? We're going to get the area under the curve. So what we do is we're going to shade in the area between the axis, which is in fact the top of the graph, where a equals zero at the top. That's the horizontal line at the top. And we go all the way down to the minus 10, where the line is. And we're going to figure out the area under the curve there. And the area is just a rectangle, so it's just the width times the height. Okay. And so the width is 2 seconds, the height is minus 10 meters per second squared, or meters per second per second, so that's minus 20 meters per second. So that represents the change in velocity. And in fact, the velocity starts at 0, and it ends, therefore, at minus 20 meters per second. And that's the velocity it has just before it runs into the ground. And we also see the motion takes two seconds. Okay, so that's how we can get our change in velocity off the acceleration versus time graph. What is our velocity versus time graph? And one thing to remember is the acceleration is the slope of the velocity versus time graph, and our acceleration is constant. So our graph must have a constant slope. And again, think about 
as the object is falling, what the velocity is doing. It is steadily increasing in magnitude, getting more and more negative, in fact. So let's think about what the velocity versus time graph looks like as time goes by. And here it is. So let's wait till it's all done because it's rescaling the y-axis here. And when it's done, you can see that the graph has a constant slope. That slope, in fact, is the acceleration. The velocity changes at a constant rate. Okay, so velocity starts at zero, ends up at minus 20 meter per second. Halfway through, it's half of that, etc., etc. Okay, so we're going to check to make sure the slope of the velocity graph is the acceleration. So this graph has a constant slope, so we'll just use the entire graph to find the slope. Okay, so let's just rise over run. So we dropped minus 20 meters per second in a two second period. So what's our slope? Rise over run. Minus 20 meters per second over two seconds is minus 10 meters per second per second or meters per second squared. And that in fact is the value of our acceleration. So it works. Now we're gonna look at connections between velocity and position. So we're going to complete the following sentences in a very similar way to the first ones we did. The instantaneous velocity is the slope at a particular instant on a position versus time graph. And if you have a velocity versus time graph, then we can get something about the change in position. And it's the area under the curve for a particular time interval on a velocity versus time graph. So let's see how that works in this case. So we've seen the motion diagram, we've seen the velocity graph. So how is velocity related to position? Again, the area under the curve is the change in position, which is what we call the displacement. So let's do that for the entire two second period. So there's our area under the curve. We go from the V equals zero line, the axis, the horizontal axis, go down to the red, line where the graph itself is. We shade that in and we get a nice triangle here. So we've got a height of our triangle, minus 20 meters per second, width of two seconds. So that's kind of the base. So we do one half the base times the height to get the area of the triangle. So one half of two is one multiplied by minus 20 meters per second is minus 20 meters. Actually one half of two seconds is one second. So our units work out to minus 20 meters. Okay, so that's our displacement. And that's consistent with what's shown in the motion diagram. Starts at x equals 20, ends up, or y equals 20 if you want to call it that, but a position of 20 meters above the ground ends up at zero on the ground. So it's dropped through a distance of 20 meters. Up is positive, down is negative, so the displacement is minus 20 meters. What about the position versus time graph? And this is when the acceleration is constant. Again, remember the velocity is the slope of the position versus time graph. What's the velocity doing? It's steadily changing. So that means the slope of our position versus time graph has to steadily change. So again, here's our motion diagram. Think about what the position versus time graph looks like. It's got to start at 20 with a slope of zero because the velocity initially is zero. And then it gets a steeper and steeper slope as time goes by. So let's see what that graph is going to look like. Okay, so it starts at 20, slope is zero, slope gets bigger and bigger, and two seconds later, it's at x equals zero. So there's our position versus time. And the slope of the position graph is steadily changing. The slope, again, at any instant, is the velocity. Okay, so that's how all these graphs are related to one another, position, velocity, acceleration, and how you can get one thing from another. Okay, so that's a nice introduction to what we can get off of graphs and what these graphs look like in general for constant acceleration.